So this will be the uh, entire unabridged version, or maybe just slightly abridged version, of uh, the story of my acute abscess that I had uh, two months ago. December of 2013 was uh, tooth explosion times, and this is the whole story of that. I kind of went into it a little bit in that video when it was happening, but I decided um, on New Year's Eve, I made this big-ass long hour-and-a-half video of me telling the whole story. Uh, thank you, truck. Thank you. Edit that down and give you the entire, like, full version of the story. Uh, keep in mind, this is a video I made for myself. I didn't make this video to, to cut it up and edit it together and for others to see it. So I'm very, like, open and honest in it. And uh, I say fuck a few too many times because I just kind of do when I'm talking to myself like that. It was like a, a journal entry or a diary entry. I mean, technically, if you want to, if you really want to go back, this entire ordeal started in... Uh, it was the spring of the summer of 2009. I was walking out of my bedroom, there, and my door was like halfway open. It was like slightly ajar. And as I was walking towards it, I was going to walk out, you know, out of my room, out into the hallway. As I was walking towards it, I was going to swing my door, the door all the way open, because it was like halfway closed. But the rhythm, the rhythm of my walking matched up exactly that I swung the door open. It'd be easier if I could show you with visuals. I swung the door open, and my left foot came down and stopped it, like right in front of me. You know, because I was walking, so I put my left foot down and it stopped the door like right in front of me. And it would have just bounced off my foot and reclosed. But then my right foot came down and it bounced off that and held it dead center right in front of my face and just boom, like I smashed right into it head first. And uh, I tore this huge gash in my forehead <laughs> and I also um, chipped one of my teeth. I knocked this like chunk off of the molar on the top left furthest back, which is the molar that all of these problems happen to. So that's why I'm including this. I don't know if this had anything to do with it, but it, it might have. This was sort of a precursor to what was going to happen. Uh, so I knocked off this big chunk of this tooth, and oh my god, it was the funniest thing that's ever happened. Oh my god, it was so funny. It was so painful. I was in so much pain. And, and I was holding my forehead, and there was literally blood running between my fingers <laughs> and I was laughing hysterically it was so funny oh my god um I just I thought I'd need like a root canal or reconstructive cosmetic dentistry or whatever to get that tooth better but I just went to the dentist my next appointment and uh, they just did it with you know regular filling they numbed me they they just put a filling there and it, it was it was fine it was a whole tooth again walk right into a door and knock out one of my teeth <laughs> and tear a huge gash in my forehead and again I'm only adding this as a as a, you know, a, a bit of a caveat, because I don't know if this ultimately influenced what happened, you know, the story I'm going to tell in the video, but it might have, and also it's just a good precursor to what's going on. So now I take you to my field operative, Nick, to tell you the rest of the story. So I've had a lot of, of dental care over, you know, the past couple years. Um, I took virtually no care of my teeth from age 8 to 14. When I was 14, I was going to get braces on. The, my orthodontist, Dr. Miller, as he was looking at me, like the first um, sort of preliminary checkup, you know, uh, he just said something like, has he been checked for cavities? He's like, yeah, he should really be checked for cavities before this. So we made an appointment for the dentist, and uh, that's really when I started taking care of my teeth again. But even then, you know, afterwards, I, I sometimes would take very bad care of my teeth. So I've had a lot of dental stuff like my whole life has been dental stuff for the past you know 10 years or something like that because I took such bad care of my teeth when I was a kid like for a long time now I take excellent care of them but back then you know it's, it's incredibly hard to undo damage you know prevention is always the best medicine it's it's very hard to undo damage you've already done it's best to just not let it happen but I let it happen and so I've I go to the dentist I would would go to the dentist like once a month when I had my braces, and I had braces for two and a half years, and every single visit, I would have work done. I hadn't been to the dentist in a while, because this was after I moved to New York, and I moved back, and I hadn't been to the dentist in a long time. Not a long time, but like a year or something. My dentist had just retired from private practice and was being replaced by this new dentist, uh, Dr. McDonough. So it was just kind of this thing of like, okay, I should, I should go in 
just just because I should, but also the sort of impetus for it was, well, there's a new dentist now. You can have your first appointment with her, see how she is, um, you know, yada, yada. So immediately I needed like $1,600 worth of work. Um, she had no problem paying her utility bills that month. Um, and I, I found out that, you know, uh, Dr. McDonough is a, a very good dentist. But I had the my first appointment with her. Uh, it, immediately, like I said, I had to have a... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Like I said, my first appointment with her, I had to have a whole bunch of work. I had to have, like, you know, six or seven or eight huge fillings. Like, really, like a big deal. And I had one appointment that was over an hour and 15 minutes of just pure drilling. My first appointment, it was for my two front teeth. My second appointment were for these four, these fillings all on the, very deep fillings, all on the chewing surfaces of the teeth, and that's that's very important. And there was one in each quadrant of my mouth, one at the top and bottom left, one on the top and bottom right. You know, two, one on the top left, bottom left, you know, you know what I mean. So I got this done in March of 2013. A couple days, I, I think it was like a Wednesday or something, I got the work done on Saturday. I was in the middle of eating something, and I was chewing on my right side, and all of a sudden, it, it, it felt like... One of my top right teeth and one of my top left teeth just really started to hurt, starting to get very sore. I was like, oh, that's weird. So I, and, and just like started to hurt to chew. So um, as I was eating, I switched over to the left side and started to chew over there. And then within a minute or two, it started to hurt over there too. And it was one on the top, one tooth on the top, one tooth on the bottom. And it started to really hurt. I stopped eating, but by this time, the, the chewing, the, the pain that had been set off, like, it was already in motion, and it was really bad. Like, it really, really fucking hurt. I was like, oh my god, what the hell's happening? And it just launched into this two or three hours of this incredible pain that I had never felt before in my, like, up deep in my gums. It wasn't the tooth itself. It was just this insane pain that I had never felt before. And I just like for two, two, three hours and I was just like, oh my God, what the fuck? What is going on? I had some benzocaine. I put that on my gums and that didn't help it. But I, I, it was just this horrible, horrible pain in my gums and I couldn't figure out what it was. I was like, oh my God, what the hell? Like, what's happening? I don't, this was this was a while ago. This was almost a year ago now, so I don't really remember most of the specifics, but I think I tried eating again and the same thing happened. Like, it would just, chewing would set, you know, I would feel it in this one tooth on the top, one on the bottom. It would just set off this pain, this horrible pain I'd never felt before. And that would last for like two or three hours and nothing would make it better. I would take painkillers, I would, you know, do everything I could, nothing would make it better. So I didn't know what was going on. I thought I had some weird ass infection of some sort. I had, thought I had some weird disease. I, I didn't know what was going on. So um, I had an appointment with Dr. McDonough again because she had more work to do. I had, I had made three appointments and I still had the third one to go. So I was just like, okay, I'll just tell her, you know, when I go in for that appointment. When I went in, I explained to her what the problem was because it was so weird because it was this horrid pain and it would keep jumping around my mouth. It would, I'd set it off on the right side and it'd be all on the top right, uh, the bottom, top and bottom right, and then it would be the top left and bottom right, and then it would be all on the bottom left. It, would just, it just kept going around all the quadrants of my mouth and it kept just doing that with no rhyme or reason. You know, it, there was no logic to it. It would just fly around my mouth. And then sometimes, the pain would, you know, go to my my ears or to my nose or to my eye or some weird part of my face. And so I just didn't know what was going on. So when I went in to get uh, to finish up the work, I told my dentist, and she uh, first thing she did was tap all my teeth and everything, you know, looking for root canal. And I knew what she was doing. You know, like I, I was thinking, I know, I know what you're looking for. She tapped all my teeth. None of them reacted. None of them hurt more than any of the others. So she said, okay, what the problem, what it probably is, is uh, the fillings are too high. And when the fillings are too high, you know, that tooth is meeting the, the bottom, the, um, you know, the other side of the teeth too hard. And you're pushing down really, really hard on uh, the periodontal ligament. And uh, it becomes inflamed and that really, really hurts. And so I thought, oh, wow. You know, I never even thought of that. I thought it was some, you know, strange, I thought it was patient zero for some kind of weird disease. But I just thought, oh, wow, it's that simple. Wow. And so she shaved down all the fillings a little bit more, took material off of them, and then she finished up the work and just said, okay, and then, you know, that, that's it. Unless your problem comes back, uh, you don't need to come back until um, your next cleaning. So I have a good summer. I had to, I waited a couple of days for it to heal. And then I, I ate something. The first thing I ate were gushers. Instantly, I could tell it was better. Like it was so much better. I could tell when in the dentist chair and I closed my jaw and my teeth, my teeth lined up 
like totally differently. And I instantly, I knew like, oh my God, that must've been it. So, cause I mean, not, it was horrible pain. I couldn't eat anything. Like everything eating was pain. It was horrible pain. Some was just more manageable than others. Like really, really soft food was manageable, but it still was pain. Hard foods were undoable, but it just like, I couldn't eat without extreme intense pain. So I think the first thing I tried, I tried to eat some gushers and I had a bagel and I had some pasta. And it quickly became apparent that that was a really, really big help. Like it really made a difference, but uh, it still was there a little bit, especially on my left side. My left, my top left side had been the worst. You know, it had been all all four quadrants of the mouth, but the, my top left was the absolute worst. And that was still, it was better, but it was still there, and it's it, it's still, you know, there was still an issue. So I made another appointment, and I went back, and she ground them down a little bit more. Again, after that, it was a lot better. Like the difference was very, very noticeable, very tangible. Like it was a lot better, made a big difference, but it was still there on the top left, maybe on the right still, but I was like, it's still on the top left. Like it is really still going on the top left. It was better in that, much better in that now, instead of chewing, setting off this pain, now it only hurt on, on biting pressure. And it wasn't even that bad, it was doable. I mean, I was just so excited. I couldn't eat for like a month without extreme pain. And I didn't know what was going on. I thought I, like I said, I thought I had some weird disease. I thought I was typhoid Mary. You know, I, I was just so overjoyed that I could eat again. I really didn't give a shit. I was like, okay, it's fine. Then throughout the year of 2013, throughout the, the whole thing, it, it started to bother me again. You know, it was always a problem and it started to bother me. And uh, I, I started thinking like, I really should go back to the dentist and get this checked out again. Uh, I, was, I was scared. I was afraid she was going to say I needed a root canal and I was scared to get a root canal. Starting in November, because this is, remember it happened in March, so this is a long time. Starting in November, it really started to bother me. Like it really started to pick back up and bother me. Around that same time, my ears started to bother me as well. And it was just a lot of pain. And all of a sudden, it was like, okay, it's really bothering me now. I should really get it get it looked at. I was still in the middle of reeling from the vision thing when this the whole the teeth and ears stuff started. It started in the middle of November. It started as that pressure and then that turned to pain, really bad pain. And so just everything was hurting. And then this tooth started acting up a lot. It's been a long time and it's been hurting ever since then, just in different degrees. That night I went for the walk when it was like 11 degrees out. I got back, I sat at the computer and that pain just turned it a little bit and it just kind of irritated it. And I was like, oh man, that hurts. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. Finally to the point where I was like, holy shit, this really hurts. I should lie down because you know whenever I have pain like that my first inclination is I want to go to sleep or at least I want to I just want to lie down whenever I have pain I just want to sleep I did of course now I know that's exactly what made it way worse and I already knew it would kind of yeah that's right I already knew it would because of all the uh, periodontal ligament pain and having uh, all year don't suck your dick I knew okay this is gonna make it worse but I, I just need, I need to lie down I lie down and it just exploded and I mean, for like three hours, horrible pain. I remember that, I couldn't believe it. I was just going insane. I couldn't believe it. It was my first taste of this, this pain. Finally around eight o'clock, it was starting to subside and I came down here and got the aspirin and took like 600 of them. And by that point, the pain was really like dying down. At this point, my ears were still bothering me too. Wasn't that the third of December? I went to the doctor, I think so. Completely dissatisfied. It was embarrassingly bad. She comes in, you know, the not the nurse practitioner, the, uh, the like, you know, assistant nurse, whatever. And she's like, oh, how are you? And I said, oh, I'm okay. How about you? She's like, well, you can't be too okay. Cause it's like, fuck you. I'm 21 years old and I'm going to the doctor. Something must be wrong. Like I'm in a lot of pain. I don't need your little bullshit, okay? So I answer all these basic questions cause I hadn't been there in such a long time. And she said, okay, so what's the problem? And so I described it, saying, you know, okay, I think, I don't remember when exactly it was, but it was somewhere, sometime around the middle of November, uh, I developed this pressure in my ears, mostly my left, but also my right. And it was just pressure for a while, but then uh, eventually it turned into pain, and it started really hurting. So there's pressure, and now there's pain. Like I said, mostly in my left, but also in my right. And she pauses, and she looks at me and goes, so you have an earache? And I just stared for a second, like, well, yeah, I guess if you have a succinctness fetish and you want to sum it up in as few words as possible, 
I suppose, but when we're talking about healthcare, I'm trying to give you as much information as possible so you can best, you know, deal with my problem. And so I kind of just went like, well, yeah. I said, okay, and she started typing in that laptop. And she said, okay, she'll be in shortly. And I was like, okay, thanks, and she left. The practitioner nurse came in. One of the first things she says is, so this is in both ears equally, right? And instantly I was like, she did not type down anything I fucking said. She didn't type down a single thing. I was like, well, no, it's, it's mostly in the left. I forgot to add here something else that pissed me off about, you know, when I was sitting there in the, in the doctor's office. As she's looking at my ears, she says, uh, so how long have you had this? Like, how long has this been going on? And I said, oh, maybe like two, three weeks. And she goes, two or three weeks? Like, really loudly. And I, I was like, oh, yeah. And she gives me this look like I strangled a baby. It's like, well, yeah, it developed. And I thought, oh, that's weird. But maybe I, when I still had it the next day, I thought, oh, maybe I have a cold, maybe I have a head cold, maybe this, maybe that. Then after about a week, I thought, wow, it's, it's not going away, so I should probably see a doctor about this. I called to make an appointment, and you made an appointment like a week and a half in the future. So yeah, I've had it about two or three weeks. I mean, like, how much do I know about healthcare? Not nearly as much as a nurse practitioner. But I do know that a very important step in the patient-doctor relationship is you do not fucking do that. You don't go, what the fuck is the matter with you? That's not something you do. She looks at my ears, she's, she looks at both of them, she said, well, I don't see anything. I don't see, it's not like a rip-roaring infection. I'm gonna prescribe some, uh antibiotics. I'm absolutely feeling like these antibiotics aren't gonna do shit. They're just gonna help build up my body's resistance to antibiotics. That's all they're gonna do. I was like, okay, whatever, I'll see. I'll see if this helps. You know, I'll take them all the way through and then at the end we'll see what happens. Because I timed it out. I was like, okay, so I have to take three days, so this will last me about two weeks. So the next day, I woke up and my stomach was upset. And then I took antibiotics on an empty, my first antibiotic on an empty stomach, so I was more upset. So I had an appointment for the dentist on the 5th, and I thought, my feeling was that the, the, the filling was still too high. And I was still fucking up with my periodontal ligament, because that's, that's what it felt like. That's what it was, actually, but that's beside the point. So my thought was, I'm going to go in, and she's going to shave it down a little bit, and we'll see if it helps. My fear was that I had done not permanent damage, but damage that required treatment, as opposed to damage you just let heal. That was my fear, that I had just let it go so long that I had really fucked stuff up. Not necessarily that you'd say root canal, though I was afraid of that. I was just afraid that I had let this ride too high for too long. <laughs> it's like a country song or something. So I thought I'd go in, get it shaved down a little bit more, and then see if that helped. So as we're getting closer and closer to, uh, there's a dentist visit that I know is uh, going to happen. It starts to get worse and worse in like leaps and bounds. And it started to get really, in retrospect, it really should have alarmed me more than it did. What started to happen was it was just bothering me throughout the day. But what would happen was when I'd lie down to go to sleep, it would just become so bad and it would become unbearable that I was just like, fuck it, I'm, I won't go to sleep. Like I'm gonna go do something else. And then I'd go and sit down on my computer chair and it, it would just go away within a couple minutes, within an hour, it would completely vanish and go down to zero. And then that would get worse and worse, where I would, I would, every time I'd lie in bed to go to sleep, it would just, this pain would set in. So lying down started to really set it off, and it, 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 uh, it sucked. But in the back of my mind, I was just thinking, I already have a, a you know, an appointment with the dentist. And so this was going on for the, like, you know, the, a week leading up to this dentist appointment. Then, the night before, it got so bad, I had to uh, sleep sitting up. I had to prop up pillows against my wall, and I had to sleep sitting up, which just felt so wrong. Like, it really felt like something is wrong here, and, you know, lo and behold, of course, that was true, but to hold on a little bit longer, tomorrow is the appointment. <laughs> Maybe, like, two nights before the dentist appointment, it had gotten so bad I had to sleep sitting up, and then the night before, sleeping sitting up was starting to not even work anymore. That's when it started, and I don't remember how, I guess it just really, really hurt. It wasn't what it became, but it was bad, and it really hurt. I remember the night before I went to the dentist was really when it started. It was really shitty. So we got there, I went in first, and I expected the dental assistant to lead me into the, the room with the dental chair, because like I said, I thought I was just going to get it ground down a little bit more, but she went into the hygienist's room with the x-ray machine. And I just was like, well, wait a minute. And I even hesitated and I was like, am I supposed to go in there? Or? They took an x-ray, 
Those things fucking hurt because that thing jabbed you right in the roof of your mouth. And so Dr. McDonough came in immediately, like right now, I was like, oh shit, she's gonna say I need a root canal or something, isn't she? She explained, she said, yeah, you see this, like this, the filling is really big, and here there's just this much, and here's the nerve, and we irritated the nerve, and that's what this is, and, and she, oh, at first she, she tapped my teeth, that didn't react. She just started going off like, okay, it didn't react to the tapping thing, that's good. It's just like a pulpitis, but the thing about that is it's, it could be temporary, it could last a couple months, or it could uh, last forever and you need to have a root canal. She said, so what you need to do is you can wait a little bit or you can have, you need to get a root canal or you can have it extracted. And she said something like, if you get it extracted, because you have that wisdom tooth in there, that can like take its place or something like that, which I, I did not know that. And I still haven't had that confirmed by any other dental professional. I thought like, oh really? Wow. I was very worried that all it was was just this this malocclusion. And I was gonna go get a root canal and get an extraction and da 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 and this problem would still be there. I hesitated at the end and I was like, but I'm I'm having the pain that's still like before and sometimes it does this and that and she explained, she's like, well yeah, that's that's how the nerves of your mouth are, are set up that it sometimes does that. And so I went back out and I was like, I need a root canal, don't I? And of course, you know, getting an extraction is the last thing that you want to do. Unless you absolutely cannot save the tooth, you don't want to get an extraction. I'm like, well, I guess I really have to consider that. So I said, well, I think I'll wait a little bit. I'll decide, you know, whether I should just go through with the root canal or just go, ah, fuck it, pull it out. If you want to get it extracted, Dr. Musto can do that. And I thought like, oh yeah, that's that's true, he can do that. I was like, oh, maybe, you know. I guess I have to decide pretty soon. So I was like, well, I'll think about it. That's right, on that same day, that night, was when we went to get uh, our hair cut. And I was not happy, I was in pain. I was in a lot of pain. And I was just unhappy, I didn't want to go, but at the same time, I was like, like, I'm not canceling it. I was like, fuck it, I'll go, but I am miserable. Like, I am not happy. My whole head was in a lot of pain, and this tooth was really fucking hurting, and my ears were really fucking hurting, and I was just miserable. I was, I was probably not very pleasant to be around. I remember sitting there in the hair place, and my tooth really fucking hurt. I was being like, oh my god, I'm in pain. So I got my hair cut. Tracy's always... Nice, and that was that. Was that. Weather was shitty, it was raining, I think. The nexus of this entire thing, in, in, in reality, of what uh, Roman referred to as the dark days, which I really like, so that's what I'm going to refer to them as. The start of the dark days happened that night when I came home from getting my hair cut. I was in so much pain, so much pain, and I had this weighing on my mind of like, am I going to get a root canal, or am I going to get extracted, or what? And I was in so much pain, and I was so miserable, and I had faked my way through getting my hair cut. And when I got home, I was just so miserable and in so much pain and yada yada that I just, I tore my jacket off and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to sleep because I was so tired. And I got in bed and as I was lying in bed, that, that pain just started up like heating up a skillet. It just got searingly bad and just worse and worse until eventually I tried sitting up, you know, I tried sleeping sitting up and that wouldn't work. And that was when, this was when the whole thing started. That was when it started, really. Yeah, that's right, that night, it was that night that that fucking shit started. Just in utter agony. Spent a whole night in complete agony. I'd gotten very little sleep and I was so tired and all I wanted to do was go to sleep and just be under the blankets because it was cold. It was like fucking 30 degrees to 20 degrees. It was cold. I just wanted to be under the blankets, but I couldn't. Lying down would set it off. Oh my god. I don't know how to describe this fucking pain. It would ebb and flow. It would start at zero, right? If we're talking zero to ten on the pain scale. It would start at zero. It would go up and up and up and up. It would hit ten. It would keep going up. It hit eleven. It would keep going in. It hit twelve. It would stay there for like five minutes, absolutely just like, ah, like fucking screaming in agony for like five minutes. It would stay there and then it would slowly start to go back down and go to 10, 9, 8, 7, and it would do one of two things. Either it would go to zero and stay there for maybe two minutes and then start to go back up or it would go to maybe like three hover there and then start to go up then. Lying down, fucking forget it. Oh my God, would that set it off? Holy shit. But just sitting down, set it off. And standing and moving around a lot seemed to make it go away. I don't know if it really did or if I just fooled myself into thinking that. Like that time I had a stomach virus and I thought stretching out my legs and then contracting them and like that would help. It probably didn't, but I, it was just a placebo thing. Like I was trying to pretend I had control over a situation where I had no control. This is how I was so exhausted and all I wanted to do was fucking sleep. And I was just, oh my 
God. Oh my God. It was so bad. Oh my God. This is when I wanted to sleep. When I wanted to, when I just couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I want to sleep. I want to fucking sleep. I would wait for the pain to get down to zero, which would sometimes take a long time. I would stand up and I would pace from the window to the door, just back and forth, back and forth for like two full minutes. And then I would jump under the covers, close my eyes and try as hard as I could to get to sleep. I wouldn't fall asleep. Maybe once or twice I'd start to kind of drift and then just like, bam, that pain would kick back in again. And I would just be, oh my God, the shit that I was doing, the noises I was making, the stuff I was saying. Words cannot do it justice. Nothing compares. Sometimes I can be a bit of a puss when it comes to pain. I don't usually bitch about pain, but I can really feel sorry for myself easily if I'm in pain. This was unreal. 12 or 13 out of 10. Beyond, just, oh dear. It would build up and then it'd go away. It would stay away for long enough for me to go like, whew, Oh my god, what the fuck? But no, it was coming back. And then it would just start to build up and build up. And I mean, it was, it wasn't my tooth. It was the space above. It was my periodontal ligaments. So it was the space above because it was the abscess. It was in the gums and I would just hold my face so hard. Sometimes pressing on it made it feel a little bit better and then immediately worse. I didn't know what to do. I just, I was just going crazy. I was going crazy. I went through like a box and a half of tissues on that first night. That was all I could do. Couldn't believe it. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Oh my god, just remembering it now. Holy shit. It's just a wreck. I was a fucking wreck. I was lying in bed in the middle of the night and suddenly I got this feeling like, holy shit, I'm gonna vomit. So I jumped out of bed and the only place I could think of vomiting that was even slightly convenient for me was my trash can. My head is over my fucking garbage and I start dry heaving like a motherfucker. Suddenly my hearing gets fucked up. My left ear almost goes completely away. The hearing in my right ear is really muffled. I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck is happening? Right as I'm thinking this, I'm standing over my fucking trash can in this pain, dry heaving. I can't hear anything. Suddenly I start sweating like a crazy motherfucker. I mean, sweat pouring from every part of me. And suddenly I get these cold chills. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I am just losing my goddamn marble. I genuinely thought I was going to go insane. I hadn't eaten in three days. I hadn't slept in three days. I'm going through all this unbelievable pain. Now I got the dry heaves. I'm breaking out in cold sweats, kneeling on my floor, head over my garbage can, about to vomit. I legitimately felt like, holy shit, I'm losing my mind. Because I kept seeing stuff in the corner of my eyes. And then maybe I heard things. I don't remember. It, w it was a different state of mind. I felt like a piece of me died. I was hallucinating. I, that's right. I kept seeing stuff. I re I've completely forgotten about that. It was around six or seven. I texted her and said, I've just been in agony all night. I've spent the past 12 hours just in absolute agony. Like, I, I need something. I need help. Every once in a while, I'd go, fuck it. I need to lie down. And I'd lie down horizontally. And oh, shit. Shit. Within a minute later, I'm like, fuck it, I, I gotta lie down. I haven't slept in like three days. I gotta lie down. I'd lie down horizontally all the way, not sitting up, and it would be cool for, you know, like 30 seconds. And then that pain would start, and I'd be like, fuck it, I'm gonna lie down anyway, I don't care. I kept saying like, fuck it, just lie down through the pain. Like, it doesn't matter, I, I'm so tired, I, I just wanna fucking sleep. Just fuck it, fuck it, forget the pain, ignore the pain. Oh, distract yourself, no. There was no distracting myself from it. There was no distraction. It was beyond that. And it would just get to a point where I couldn't take it anymore. So I'd go, fuck it. And I'd sit up and just grab my mouth and just cry and make these noises. I started out saying words. Eventually it just became noises. I was just making sounds, elongated vowels, like a fucking infant. Made it feel a little better to scream about it. I couldn't form words. And eventually it would sort of die back down and I'd think, I want to lie back down, but I'm not going to purposely go through that again, you know what I mean? Like, I, And I was thinking, the pain's going to happen either way, just lie down. I was just losing my fucking mind. She hands me something, she says, do you want to take half of this Vicodin? And immediately I was like, whoa, you know, I don't like taking pills. And she said Vicodin, I was like, oh my god, I was hesitant to even take it. Now keep in mind, I was in the worst agony I've ever been in in my life, and still I was like, I don't know if I want to take that. I'll ask if Dr. Musto can see you today. I took the Vicodin and I broke it in half, because you know it has that little line down the center where you can break it in half. I broke it in half, I took half, and I was like, what the fuck? And then I took the other half. It's like, why am I breaking it in half? Okay, that'll help. Meanwhile, still being racked with this 13 out of 10 pain. I might take down the pain. 
it didn't. And I don't know if this is placebo or if this is, I just imagined it or whatever, but I think after I took the Vicodin, what the Vicodin did to me, I felt like I had taken what I was going through and kind of, uh, let me turn the light on so I can show you, kind of went like this and, and got a hold of it. It wasn't any better. It wasn't a single bit better. None of the pain was gone. Not even a fraction of a decimal of a percent. It just sort of felt like, before I felt like I was losing my mind. Now I felt like I, I had taken what I was going through and just put my arms around it. I was still going through it, but I felt like maybe I had a little bit more control. I don't know if that was the drug, you know, the narcotic part of the narcotic, or if I was just imagining that, or if I just imagined it in retrospect. But I remember at the time thinking like, something changed after I took that Vicodin, but it wasn't the pain. It felt like, okay, I can I can get through this. I'll put it to you this way. I started saying words again. It wasn't just shouting random syllables and screaming things. I actually started just being like, fuck, like, fuck, God damn it. Like, wow, this is bad. You know, I started saying actual words, you know, Maybe it wasn't the Vicodin that did that. Maybe it was the fact that I told someone about it and they were out getting help. It wasn't just me alone going through this. They were gonna go tell not only someone else, but a doctor. At this point, I was thinking like, okay, they're gonna take this tooth out. It's gonna be an extraction. Uh, she had sent a message that said, come around 12.15. And it was like seven or eight in the morning. So I was like, okay, 12.15. Still going through this incredible pain. I managed to get a little bit of sleep, tiny bit. Not without, you know, these mountains of agony. Either side, you know, trying to get to sleep and waking up after having gotten maybe five minutes of sleep. Finally, it got around the time for me to go to Dr. Musto's office. I got into the office. I was sitting there a long time because I think he changed the appointment. It was more like one o'clock. So I was sitting there for almost an hour, like 45, 50 minutes. And while I was doing so, yeah, it was, it was exploding with pain still. And I was just sitting there like, oh my God. And then I got another, oh Jesus, right, another attack of the dry heaves and my hearing fucking up. And then uh, I got these sweats. And you know when I got the dry heaves? Right when the pizza that they ordered for lunch arrived. And you could smell it all over the place. And I was just like, oh my god. I l almost got up and went into the hallway. I, I suddenly had these dry heaves. And how do you hide the dry heaves? I was trying hi hard not to like show it because I'm sitting in a waiting room with like you know, four or five people in it. Then my hearing gets fucked up. I'm listening to that the implant TV or whatever the fuck. Oh my God, I start sweating like a crazy motherfucker. I'm just like squirming in the seat, touching my face and my ears, doing these weird lurches because I have the dry heaves and shit. And then I start sweating and I'm like wiping sweat off my face. It was pouring the fuck down my face. At first I was like, oh my God, I, you know, I probably look like a total freak and everything. And I'm like, Fuck you! Everyone in the world gets called in before me. Apparently he moved and he was gonna see me to later on because he needed more time because he thought he was gonna do an extraction. Finally! And I had like th two or three episodes of the pain and one episode of the dry heaves hearing sweat stuff. But the pain was just like, oh fuck! Right when the pain subsides, the assistant calls me in. She says, uh, so are we gonna do an extraction today or are you not sure? And I said, well, I'm not really sure, but I certainly wouldn't say no to it. And she laughed at that. Dr. Musto came in and I'm n not in pain at this point. I'm in no pain. Cause I'm telling you when it, when there was no pain, when it would go down to zero, no pain. Yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention this. I would click my teeth together. The tooth that was bothering me wouldn't feel a thing. When there was no pain, there was no pain. But when there was pain, Holy fucking goddamn shit. So I'm lying in this dental chair and then Dr. Musto comes in and he's asking me questions. I'm like, I'm not in pain. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I really thought he was going to rip the tooth out. I thought he was just going to extract it. And in fact, that, that picture that I took of myself and you could see how just on, but you can tell I'm in so much pain in my, I have bags around my eyes. Hair is all a mess. I just look horrible. You can see in my eyes how much pain I'm in. I took that because I was going to be like, hey, this is the last time I have all of my teeth. It's literally why I took that picture. So he says, if I'm going to extract this tooth, I really want to make sure that it absolutely cannot be saved. I took an x-ray first and I was sort of in lingering pain and then the thing is jabbing me. It hurts a lot, but I mean, it just hurts anyway. It's jabbing into the roof of my mouth. She says, okay, you can open your mouth. You can let go of the thing. I didn't, it fell out. She was like, oh, you okay? I'm like, well, yeah, I, I guess, but that really fucking hurt. Looking in there, he's testing, he's poking, he's prodding, he's doing all this stuff. He taps all of them. Let me know if any of these react differently. He taps all of them, there's nothing. He's in the middle of like checking. He has instruments in my mouth and he goes, you know, Nick, if you hadn't told me you were having problems with this tooth, I wouldn't even blink an eye at it. Like, I wouldn't even suspect anything. There's nothing wrong with your tooth. He tries different things. He's like, does, does this hurt? Like, does it hurt when I do this? Does it hurt when I do this, maybe? And he's like, no, I don't feel anything. He's looking at the x-ray and he says, yeah, it's, it's a deep filling. But he's like, there's this much. And he points out the, the amount of material in between the filling and the, the nerve. And he's like, yeah, but there's this much. So what's, what's the deal? What's the verdict? 
And he said, I don't know. You could have abscess here, and it's raining into the sinuses, but if you had it, you'd see it on the x-ray. I could send you to Dr. Lesniak, but all he would do would be to do what I just did. And he's like, he wouldn't even do all that I just did. He'd put cold on it, and then he'd charge you $75 to say, come back when it's acute. He's like, whatever you want to do. And I was like, well, if what the fuck? If you don't know what to do, what makes you think I do? She'd just come back when it's acute. And I was like, okay. Okay, he gave me ibuprofen. So I left pissed off. I was upset. I was really upset. I had walked in there thinking this tooth was going to be yanked out and all my problems would be gone. And then he just goes, yeah, I don't know. And it's, it's not, I'm not like blaming him or anything. It, I wasn't pissed off at him. I was pissed off that I was just like, really? Holy shit. I was pissed off. I got home. Right after I got home, I sat down for a little while in the computer chair. Pain started to come back. I was like, son of a fucking bitch. Because I had been so active and was walking and stuff, for a while it felt kind of okay. Right when I sat down and it just started to come back again. And I was like, oh my fucking god, what the fuck. Got to like five at night. And by now, okay, the pain was fucking back. And it was back full force just like it had been the night before. I was so upset. I was ju I mean, the absolute bottom because I thought this would all be over. And now here we go again, like here we go. We're gonna have another night like that. It was gonna be the exact same. I could already tell already it was the same. The pain was just as bad. Nothing would help it. And here it was like six o'clock and we're gonna have another night like last night. And I honestly, was going to kill myself. The pain was even worse. The lowest point in my life so far. <laughs> and there have been many. First of all, when you're going through pain like that, it feels like it's never going to end. Just the fact that here we go again. I was saying to myself, I can't do another night like that. To what? I got through the other night because I knew there was an appointment with a doctor and I was going to get the tooth yanked out. Now there's nothing. And the pain was even worse. And I knew now more than ever, Nothing is gonna help it. I took like three of those 800 milligram ibuprofen and it didn't do shit And I took a Vicodin and it didn't do shit. Here I was like changing my brain chemistry The pain was there to stay and I couldn't do it came down here to take a piss I did have to piss and I did actually piss. It was a cry for help. You know May 14 1992 December 6th 2013 that's what would have happened. I'm telling you right now with no hyperbole during that night Pain was just as bad. Oh my God, was it bad. Some pillows and said to kind of just lean on them so I could maybe sleep a little bit. And that hurt like a fucking bitch, but I was so tired. I didn't even care at that point. And I fell asleep kind of tilted a little bit, not lying down, not even like sleeping sitting up, but just sort of tilted, sleeping, leaning to the side, sleep leaning. So I did that for a while and I got a little bit of sleep like that. And then eventually I, something came over me and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to lie down on that couch. So my, my head and my neck and my, uh, upper back would be like elevated and I did and it hurt like a motherfucking bitch that subsided and I finally got to sleep I woke up opened my eyes and I could see daylight and I couldn't believe it I had actually slept through the night eight or nine in the morning a Saturday for the first time in four days at this point I had actually gotten sleep I kept thinking why did my body let me do that like, why, why did it let me do that I was lying there and there was no pain, but I was incredibly thirsty. And I knew there was a glass of water on the table right behind my head. And I was so thirsty. And at first I said, fuck it. This was my strategy during the whole thing was fuck it. No pain. Just let it go. There's no pain. If you move, you're going to cause pain. And there's no pain. Just fuck it. Let it go. And I did for a while. And eventually I was like, oh my God, I'm really thirsty. I really want that water. I was like, fuck it. And I just like really quickly did it. I downed the water in, in one go, put it back down, got right back in the same position. And it did set off pain. And I was like, oh, God damn it. Fuck me. It wasn't as bad, but there was pain. And I was like, shit. All of a sudden, as I'm lying there, not even a minute after down this water, suddenly I feel like, oh, Jesus, I'm going to vomit. I forgot, like, I'm going to I'm gonna have one of those episodes of, of the heaves. I'm trying to suppress it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I can't stop it anymore. And it just started. And I, it was the worst yet. I was really heaving the shit. The water didn't even come out. Which is weird. I hadn't eaten in like four days. It was making me cough. What's wrong? What's going on? And I said, well, if I had anything in my stomach, it would be on the floor right now because I would have just vomited. You want some like tea and toast or something like that? And in response, <laughs> I had another like lurch of movement 
and it's disgusting, but you know that kind of belch noise you make when you vomit? I made one of those, and she just goes, okay, and she just turns around. The heavings stopped, the misheavings. I was nervous, you know, when, when you just vomited or just dry heave. You feel nervous about putting shit in your mouth. You're like, no, I really don't want to. But I was like, fuck it, okay, I'll take some. Immediately, my body was like, okay, yeah, that's what we want you to do. Finally, you understand. So I ate the whole plate, and it just felt like... You know in like stories or movies or something like that, someone's really hungry, someone hasn't eaten in a long time, and they do, and they drink, and they eat, and, and it just like, that sort of satisfaction of like, okay, yeah, now you've eaten, it was that. It was very fiction-y, didn't have any problems with the dry heaves or the sweat, anything like that. So that was, that was what was causing that. And then for the rest of the day, it wasn't bad. It was still pain, but it was so much better. I kept saying that day, you know, it's not that bad, when it does get bad, the worst it gets is like a five or a six, which was a far shot from what it had been. It was bad and I kept saying, you know, if I didn't have the past couple days and I got this pain, my ass would be going to the dentist in a, in a hurry. Since I've had the past couple days, this is nothing to me. Like this is a welcome reprieve. I got a shower, which was nice. The next day was bothering me even less. That tooth was very sensitive. And when I'd smack the bottom teeth into that one, it would hurt like a fucking bitch. And I kept doing that. She mentioned seeing Dr. Lesniak. We were going to do it that ninth and then the car wouldn't start. Went in. It was very quick. My tooth had been bothering me a little bit that day, but at this point it was really dying down. It was just these little, little bits of pain. Like it, it was bothering me as opposed to being this big pain. Some tests, put ice to my teeth actually, a big chunk of phallic ice. Didn't respond to anything. They did that little thing, that metal thing. Let me know if you have a tingling sensation. That was fucking weird. And they took an x-ray. Dr. Lesniak comes in for like three seconds. He introduced himself and we shook hands. He goes, yep, you definitely need a root canal. And he picks up an instrument, bangs on my tooth like he's trying to fucking drive a nail. And he goes, yeah, you feel that? I'm like, well, yeah, I feel that. He had me bite down on that thing. And that hurt like a bastard. He's just like, yep, you need a root canal. Okay, we'll get you all set up. And then he just, pew, he was gone. We scheduled it. I was like, oh, I gotta get a root canal. Nervous? But I was so eager to get it done at the same time, I didn't give a shit. First of all, I was so eager to get it done because I just wanted I wanted something done about this. So I kept thinking, you know, it's probably not going to hurt. Even if it does hurt, it can't be as bad as what I went through. Even if it is, at least I know when it's going to end. At least, and also it's a means to an end. The reason I was going to cut my fucking wrist was because it felt like it wasn't going to stop. At least, okay, finally, this will be it. If it's painful, then it's one last thing, one last hurrah of pain. And I kept like psyching myself up, like, come on, you could do it. And it won't hurt, but even if it does, come on, you could take it. After what you went through, this Nothing. Gone through months and months of really bad pain. What the fuck? Psyching myself up. The teeth weren't aligning right. I knew this tooth was really sticking out. And so much that I was like, how did I not notice this before? I thought maybe swelling could be causing that tooth to stick out, but then I thought, no, maybe that's crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. But then when I looked it up, I was like, yeah, that's totally a thing that can happen. Well, this tooth is sticking out like a crazy son of a bitch, which is why I thought it was the malocclusion, but it was also very fun when it was very sensitive and my bottom teeth would smack into it every two seconds. I mean, even if I said a word in a certain way, it's like, bink, ow, fuck, and it really hurt, and it hurt for the rest of the day. The day finally comes, nervous, some way over there, didn't feel a thing the entire time. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, under an hour, in out, quick, easy, painless. There you go, here's your thousand dollars. It was very sore, My the whole area. That day, I had a lot of soreness. Three, four, five days. Area where he gave me one of the shots, and just my gums in that whole area, very, very tender. It was hard brushing them. On Sunday, I was feeling a lot of soreness, and I was like, oh my god, what the fuck? I was like, oh yeah, I only got it the day before yesterday. Like, on Sunday. I got it on Friday. On Sunday, it felt like it was weeks and weeks ago. I realized he did it on a different tooth. He did it on the back, back molar. Not the one with the big filling. This whole time. This whole time it really was that associative phantom pain stuff. It wasn't this tooth all along. It was the t I never would have suspected it was that tooth. It's been about two and a half weeks. We're fine. Everything's good. Woohoo! Holy shit, that was quite an experience and I'm just now coming out of it. Finished my antibiotics. Lovely cap to 2013. That's a weight off my shoulders to tell that story. My gosh. My golly. Dick. Right. 2013. Worst year of my life. So as a postscript, um, I made that video New Year's Eve 2013. It's now September 2014. Shortly after I made that video, I had the last appointment to finish up my root canal, and that went fine as well. Then I had Crown made and put in. A few months after that, I don't remember exactly when it was, but I think it was in the summer. And that went fine too, and I haven't had a single problem with that area ever since. It's been fine ever since. And uh, I don't often think 
of the dark days. Not on purpose, like not in a, I don't want to think about it kind of way, but just I, I don't find myself often thinking about it. But when I go back and watch that video or I watch videos from around the time, it just reminds me like, holy shit, every time I just get these chills, like, oh my fucking God, that's right. Like that was horrible. And I have specific memories of, of going through this pain. Because I mean, remember the whole thing started, you know, the, the dark days happened. And because the dark days happened, I sometimes forget I was in horrible pain that whole year. I mean, I had work, the dental work done in March and it was in March that this periodontal ligament pain would happen in all four quarters of my mouth. And that was just ab horrent pain. It was unbelievably bad pain. And I was just, I was just in this demented state of mind where, uh, you know, I would, I would be in uh, eating anything would hurt excruciatingly and I would go to sleep with my my mouth on fire just alight with pain I would wake up eight hours later and it would be it would still be the exact same my mouth would still feel the exact same and I just felt like there was no escaping it and this went on for months and months and months again March I got the work done and this was November you know November December when it really started to act up so much that I was like okay I can't take it anymore you know it was so bad and then I got the the fillings ground down and stuff and that worked for the most part that worked on the right side and yada 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 but it was still bothering me it was just a manageable amount of bothering me and then the upper left just started to just get worse and worse and worse and it was november when it finally just broke through and i was like shit i'm in a lot of pain and then december was when the dark days happened and i still specifically remember i have a very vivid image in my mind of when i was talking about you know uh, dry heaving like crazy and with my head over my trash can and going through this pain and i, I couldn't hear and the sweat started and then i i specifically remember i kind of, you know, I mentioned it in a cursory way, but I, I remember now having all kinds of hallucinations and like I said, I hadn't slept and I hadn't eaten in days and I was just going, I was in, like I said, a demented state of mind. I was going through this pain and all this other shit and I, I remember I would, I, I kept turning and looking over my shoulder every two seconds because I'd see something and I kept hearing, you know, my name being said or I heard these sound effects mostly that just made no sense. You know, it was the middle of the night, it was like three in the morning and I was hearing all these sounds that didn't really make any sense and I kept thinking they're outside but then there would be nothing outside and they would sound too close they sounded like they were in the room with me and it, I, it was just I was losing my fucking mind it, it definitely changed my life completely the experience and the pain just changed my life it is pre and post that everything has this perspective afterwards of no matter how painful it is, at least it wasn't that. That was literally suicide inducing pain. It was 13 out of 10. I had the root canal, it went fabulously. It was expensive as shit. I got the tooth crowned and it's been almost a year now since the dark days and I, I haven't had a single problem. I just got my teeth cleaned uh, yesterday. I went in to the, my dentist for a cleaning and I had no cavities and no problems and nothing like that.